Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and it's time once again for another episode of The Art of Photography and I'm going to show you some things about framing today. I've had people send me questions in the email and uh, the last couple episodes we've been talking about printing techniques and some things to consider. We'll continue to get more advanced with that in later episodes but uh, anyway I want to talk about presentation a little bit and bringing that together. We got the holidays coming up and I know that some people have requested that I cover this topic because they want to give away some pictures as gifts and uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go with, with basic framing. Um, there's some real basic things you can do, like these images behind me that are just mounted on foam core. That certainly works. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't provide the image with much protection. And that's the whole idea of framing, is to give you a high quality of presentation and at the same time protect the image from elements like uh, UV rays from direct sunlight that comes into a room, from dust. Uh, even sometimes the materials packaged in frames can damage the image, believe it or not. And so um, the downside to all this is that, that professional framing can get really expensive. And so what I'm going to do is show you how you can kind of use some basic techniques and do it for a fairly inexpensive price. Um, let me just say right off the bat that I am not a conservator or a framer. And uh, if you are one of those two things, you're probably going to be very critical of this episode. But all my, my, my goal here today is I want to show you how just buying cheap $30 frames at the store uh, there's a couple things you can do to these just to protect them a little, little more, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, the first thing I would do is don't go with the absolute cheapest route possible. Like in the U.S. we have Walmart. I wouldn't go there to look for your frames. I would pick something like an Aaron Brothers or some kind of arts and crafts supplier that's going to have just a notch above that. Um, they're not going to have the professional custom frames. Some of them offer those as services, but again, we're talking hundreds of dollars sometimes on those. And the problem that you have is if you have 30 images that you're trying to frame, sometimes that can get really expensive really quickly, especially if they're gifts to give away. Um, so, you know, I bought buy a lot of my frames at places like Aaron Brothers. And, uh, you know, they provide decent frames. They're not the greatest things in the world, but they're good enough. Now, the problem with these is you're going to need a couple more supplies because generally the frame consists of the wood that goes around the sides. It consists of a piece of glass, and it consists of underneath that, you can see this is the mat, this big kind of thick piece of uh, board that has the hole cut into it. Your image is in there. And actually, a few of them don't have anything between your, your photo and then this piece of chipboard backing board that they've got. So uh, what I would recommend is we're going to talk about how to, how to use the correct tape to get the image in here and then we're going to talk about using acid-free materials so if you can buy mats just on their own standalone that are pre-cut or if you're going to cut them yourselves I would try to get acid-free paper that's that's the key because you don't want to try and deteriorate the, you don't want to try you definitely don't want to deteriorate the image um, if you want to go a step further and you're going to start getting into a little bit of money here as you can buy UV glass that's pre-cut uh, that will protect it from direct rays of light. But even if, if you didn't do that, you just watch where you hang it. But just the acid-free paper and, and the correct hinging tape alone um, will, uh, will, will basically get you a lot of mileage out of over-the-counter frames that you can buy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move into another workspace and I'm basically going to show you how we uh, go about doing this. So come on. Okay, so we're going to mount a picture in this, this small frame here, and uh, I just want to go ahead and show you. This is just something you know you could buy at any framing store. It's just a cheap over-the-counter frame, and uh, we'll take the insides out so you can kind of see. Basically, there's this crappy um, uh, chipboard back that goes on it, and then underneath there's this piece of paper with the advert in it. First thing you want to do is get rid of this, um, chuck that, cast it aside. Then underneath that, you're going to have the mat. And so basically what you want to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to mount the image to this mat. Um, one thing you might consider is buying, uh, you can buy pre-cut mats. Um, I have no guarantee of whether this is acid free or not. And that's very important because if it's going to be touching your image, you're going to get more longevity out of it and obviously not destroy the photograph if it is in fact acid free. That's why I threw away that, that uh, advert piece of paper that was in the back. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to mount our image to this and I don't want it sitting up next to the chipboard. We're actually going to put a piece of acid free paper on the back. Again, this is not exactly museum quality um, or up to complete archival standards, but uh, you know, for what we're doing here with just a cheap over the counter frame it's just going to give it a little more longevity than if you just find a way to wedge the image in here so the first thing we're going to do is uh, is go ahead and cut uh, the backing paper for this okay so what I'm using here is you can buy this at any art supply store this is what's known as Bristol board it's just a really heavy paper and uh, this will serve two purposes um, but basically it's going to act as a backing paper to um, our mount and what I'm going to do is I know that I need this to be exactly 8 by 10 which is the size so I'll just go ahead and uh, use a pencil 
And it doesn't have to be super clean, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark off. Uh, let's go, uh, I believe I went eight inches. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side at eight inches. And uh, I know this is making for really exciting footage here. Um, this doesn't have to be the cleanest thing in the world because it does go beneath the image in the mat. And then what I will do on here is I will use an X-Acto knife. Now you can go ahead and use scissors if you want. That certainly works too. Um, one word of caution, if you're going to use an X-Acto knife, be extremely safe. Uh, and please don't do this with any distractions. It's really easy to cut yourself and these blades are razor sharp and you don't want to do that. Um, use a cutting board, which I've used below. And then basically once I've marked off 10 inches, or excuse me, 8 inches here, I'm simply going to line these up. And like so. I'll go ahead and give this a cut straight across. What you want to do if you are using an X-Acto knife instead of scissors, is I would just make sure you're holding that down very steady. And make sure your fingers are out of the way. And just bring one smooth straight cut, clear across. And you can see that sometimes the paper, there we go. And then I need to repeat this to get the 10 inches going here. So we've done eight on each side. I'm gonna do 10 down the middle. We won't get two out of this, but you'll get the idea. Go ahead and cut this side. And I now have eight by 10 piece of backing paper here. So I'm ready to go. Okay, so we now have uh, actually cut two of these. Um, uh, these are going to be the backing boards, and basically what I'm, the reason I cut two is I'm going to show you two different scenarios where you're going to be dealing with different sizes of images and how you're going to mount them. Okay, so basically inside the frame, uh, these are going to go back to back and your image is going to be stuffed between them. So we've got two images that we're going to work with here. I have one that is uh, going to bleed off the corners of this mat, and I have another, this is a photogram. Obviously we have some flowers here, and this is a photogram of a corkscrew, and I want to mount this differently. Okay. It's more minimal, etc. But I'm gonna still use the same um, the same mat uh, on each one, just so you can see what the difference is. So, what we're gonna do is go ahead. Um, the first thing you're gonna need for figuring this out is going to be what is known as hinging tape. Okay, now this is hinging tape. It's very important that if you're going to stick something to your image or to the mat for that matter, that it needs to be acid free. Uh, this is not an expensive purchase. I bought this through Freestyle. Um, you can get it through B&H and a number of other places probably um, or any craft store, but you want to get some acid free hinging tape is what this is known as. Now the hinging tape is not self or it's not pre um, sticky. It's got a sticky thing on there, but you've got to get this wet before we're actually going to stick. I'm going to show you how to make two different hinges. Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is let's start with the larger image first. The larger image, what we're going to do is this is simply going to fit like that on the mat, and uh, when you see it from the front side, you're going to see it basically like that. Okay. So what we're going to need to do is attach this. I'm going to show you how to attach this actually to the back of the mat. Okay. And so uh, the other way we're going to do is with the smaller photogram is this is actually going to attach to the backing paper. Okay. So it's going to frame up more like that. And actually for my taste I would rather have, it's a little crowded, um, I would probably go with a bigger frame and a bigger mat and then just have the small thing in the middle. But that's just my taste. But for our purposes here I'm going to show you how to hinge this down to the backing board like that. And I'm gonna show you how to make what's called a T-hinge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take the hinging tape and I'm gonna cut four pieces of this, roughly about that size. And just maybe an inch and a half is all you need. You don't need a lot. Okay, and once we've got this set, what we're going to do is what is known as a T-hinge. Now a T-hinge simply means at the top of this, and I'm not going to do it just yet. We're going to basically uh, adhere one piece of tape like so, and then the other is going to T square over the top and give it a little bit of extra support at the top. Now the other nice thing about using hinging tape, like we've talked about, these are not sticky, we're going to have to moisten them. Um, but you can get this off of your photograph, and with a little alcohol and some TLC you can clean it up. So this is not a permanent mount, and that is very important to understand. Now what we're going to do here is, uh, I just want to make sure this, we have this straight up. We do. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to center this one in the opening here. And then what we're going to do is simply, I've got a wet paper towel here that I'm going to use. And we just moisten those a little bit like that. And I'm going to go ahead and stick one like so. If you're having problems with your paper moving around on the mat, 
You can also weight it down with some paper weights or some books or something like that just to keep it from moving on you. But I'll go ahead and moisten the tape. We're going to do two at the top. Obviously, if we had a much bigger print, uh, you can see where the T-hinge the comes into play, more importantly. But since we're mounting something small, I'm just going to show you the technique anyway. And then what we'll do is once we have the hinges in place, we're just going to go ahead and make the T at the top, give it a little extra support. And it might also help if you had a burnisher, which is basically a big dull. It looks like a knife, but there's nothing sharp on it. And you just use to burnish and get these real flat. And then finally, the last hinge will go down. And sometimes this sticks to the paper towel, but we're good. And you're good. Go ahead and make the T off there. And we're done. So that is the proper way to make a T-hinge. Now again, this is RC paper, so it sits nice and flat. And from the front, you can see that we now have, once the backing paper goes on, this will, will be a nice flat image that we can frame. Okay, so in the second example, what we're going to do is mo mount this photogram directly in the middle of the mat, like so. Okay, so we're still going to use a T-hinge right here. There's also a V-hinge, which uh, some may argue is better in this instance. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it, because um, I prefer the T. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two. I'm only going to do one hinge on this since the, the image is kind of small. And what we're going to do is slightly different. Now the last time we were mounting to the mat, so it was a real easy one on top of the other. But in this case, what we're going to need to do is get the, the tape down into the middle image because you don't want the viewer to see it from the back side. And one of these is going to have to go the opposite direction, like such, because we're going to glue it down to the backing board here. So I'll go ahead and get both of these wet so the adhesive is ready. Stick down a little bit. And basically this is what we're going to do is make the T here, like so. And then I'm going to turn it around and we're going to put the bottom part of the T on the back of the image. And you can see now that this is going to give it a little support and hold the image in place. Put the front part down and I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the backing paper. Now, at this point, you would want to have some gloves or something. I'm going to use some, some uh, peck paper here so we don't scratch the image. And voila, now we have a back-mounted image. Now, once the glass goes down, that's going to hold those corners down. They are curling up just a little bit. Okay, so this next step is going to involve, you actually want to get your pictures out of the way for this. Put them somewhere where they're going to be safe and clean. This is a problem when you buy cheap frames a lot of times. I'm going to bring the glass out of here. Now, be very careful with this. You don't want to cut yourself and or break the glass. Uh, but you can see probably on the video here that this has got basically debris from this machine cut frame all over it. So there's two things that are going to help out with this. And this is why I say do this before we even deal with our photos. I'm going to hold this away from the photo here. But I've got a can of compressed air and what I'm going to do is just kind of blow this out. Sorry, you can't see this. And just kind of get the, the loose sawdust debris off of there. And then the other thing, you can do the same thing with the glass or what I'll do in this case is actually use a little bit of Windex and a paper towel and we'll get this good and cleaned up here. Again, make sure you don't squirt this near your photos. You don't want to get Windex on your images, the actual prints. We'll go ahead and make this up like this. In fact, if, if you're even concerned, I'm making a video, so I've kind of got to keep things contained here. But you might want to actually take this into another room or outside to deal with. Well, this one is just filthy. And this, boys and girls, I just took this out of the box. I didn't do anything to it. It's just a mess. And the first couple times that I ever did this with cheap frames, you get the whole thing together before you even realize that it's it looks terrible. Um, in fact, even with all this cleaning, you're probably still going to find, again, with the cheap over-the-counter frames, that you're going to have little balls of, of uh, sawdust and whatnot underneath, and it's just how it goes. And so, again, the compressed air will help when it's just a couple of them. Right now I'm using Windex because this thing is just absolutely filthy. And again, just be real careful with this stuff. I'm going to buff that out. Uh, again, some cotton gloves would be good if you don't want to deal with fingerprints on here. And we're all good there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and slide that back down into the frame. And we're set. Let's put that away. Now I'm ready to do some assembly. What we're going to do is simply take the little sandwich that is our image here. I'll put the mat down in first. And then I'll put the backing paper in second. It gives us a little bit of uh, protection against this backing board. 
Then finally I can put the backing board in and it's all cheap glory. And at this point, what you want to do, make sure we're straight up, is uh, I would check it at this point actually before you go close all those. And you can see that I already have some little dust in there. And so in this case, what I would do is simply pull that out. And you don't want to hold this too close, but very carefully. Let's bring the backing paper out a little bit and see what that dust is. Some of them out. So you're, <laughs> you're just going to have to do this a few times. Be careful about the glass. You don't want it falling out. Just going to hit with the dust a little bit. Go ahead and put that. It just it feels like a disaster waiting to happen, doesn't it? Uh, Put the image in like such. And actually, we're ready to go here. All right, so, now let's check it. You can see that's better. Okay, so I don't have the uh, sawdust in there now. And I can go ahead and close the brads and call it a day. Okay, and we'll also put the second one in. Now remember, we cut the backing paper. We didn't mount anything to it. But the reason we're putting this in is it is an acid-free piece of paper. And it's just going to give us just a little bit of protection because I don't really trust this cheap chipboard that comes in these things. So we'll go ahead and put that in. So when we get that seated, yeah, now we're good. We don't have any dust in the top, so I'll go ahead and put the brads down. And that's the cool thing is what we've done is if you buy acid-free mats, and you get some acid-free paper on the back, and we just used hinging tape, and that's really the only magic we've pulled on this. But what is nice about this is your photographs need to last a while, especially if they're a gift to somebody, or even if you're using them for yourselves. And uh, what's nice about this is this gives you some options later if you want to get it reframed, anything like that. We just have some simple tape that uh, doesn't uh, uh, that isn't permanent. We've used acid-free boards. The only thing that these are lacking is UV glass, and unfortunately, you're going to get into the expense when you get into that. Um, so this will not protect these against fading in the sun. So really, you're at the mercy of how good your paper is, whether it's inkjet or darkroom, at uh, at fading and the archival qualities there. So you can see that we now have two images that are two different styles of mounting techniques and they both work and these are ready to go they're a little more permanent they make a nice gift they look good on a wall and there you go okay so that's just a little bit about framing and uh, again once again I, I just want to make it very clear that I'm not a uh, like I said a conservator or a framer either one so if you are and you're probably having you know uh, conniption fits watching me do this podcast but uh, the important thing is that I just want to show you how you can do something that's very inexpensive modify it just a little bit to make it a little more archival and quality and hopefully get some more life out of your images so anyway once again if you like what you see here um, we've got more episodes and more shows on the website which is thepublicbroadcast.com shoot me an email if you have any questions and even more importantly if you have a second go into iTunes if that's where you subscribe to the show and leave us a comment because the more comments we can get uh, the more feedback and hopefully the more we can do with the show in the long run and a lot of you did leave comments last week and I greatly appreciate it so anyway once again this has been the art of photography and thank you for watching